Okay, welcome Year 11s to this video. In it, as you can see, I'm going to cover sketching a linear graph. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off uh, really basic, so where you would have started off um, back in probably Year 8 when you first started uh, creating linear graphs on a set of axes. Uh, we're going to look at just plotting uh, from a rule because that's always a good backup to have. Um, and then I'll show you mostly how to use the calculator because that is vast majority of the time you're going to go to your calculator to help you to help you sketch. So obviously uh, we've looked a lot at linear equations so far, but uh, without having an actual context as to why why we would um, be exploring those um, or how is it helpful um, in everyday life to have linear linear equations, uh, the graphs make that a little bit more obvious. So linear graphs can be used to represent a range of different um, scenarios in the real world. So some of the ones that we're going to come across uh, is what we call depreciation, so um, a, a car losing value, um, or you can have a look at it in terms of, of growth as well. So we'll get to some, um, some context ones later in the topic, but today we're just looking at being able to sketch. So first of all, we've got... Um, We've got our rule y equals 1 plus 2x. Um, and so if we were to create a table of values, um, so basically using substitution, you can use your calculator if you want to, but because the numbers are so easy, I'm not going to bother. Um, so what we would do, uh, as an example, just say I did do it with this one, we'd substitute each of our x values into our rule. Uh, because each, what, is it, what this is telling me is how x and y are linked. So what's the relationship between x and y? So this is telling me that y values, if you uh, take 1 and add 2 times the x, so this is going to be 1 plus 2 times 3, so 2 3 is a 6 plus 1 is 7, that means uh, that that's a coordinate. That's a coordinate that our line is going to pass through. So the coordinate would be written like this, 3 comma 7. We do the same with this, so this is 1 plus 2 times 2, 2 2 is a 4 plus 1 is 5, uh, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, uh, this is going to be 1 plus 2 times 0, and what you can see emerging is a pattern here as well, you can see that each of these numbers um, have got a difference of 2. Um, so then we can go to the negative, so uh, 2 by negative 1 be negative 2, 1 plus negative 2 be negative 1. Uh, 2 by negative 2 is negative 4. 1 plus negative 4. And uh, 2 by negative 3 is negative 6. 1 plus negative 6. Now what should happen obviously once we do plot these is we should see them in a dead straight line. So what I'm going to do is put um, a scale that's going to work here because I need to get up to uh, 7 at least on the y-axis so if I, I just went 2, 4, 6, 8 um, and then I've just followed that down this way. We do need um, 1 to 3 on the x and down to negative 3 like so. Then we'll start plotting so we've got 0, 1, it's going to be here, uh, 1, 3, Now, you know you've made an error if you're not getting a straight line. Uh, you may not get a, uh, well, you'll know as well that there could be a problem uh, with your scale if you're not getting a straight line. So that's where the scaling is very important. If you are um, actually plotting um, like I'm doing, plotting as, you, as, opposed, as opposed to sketching. Sketching, we tend not to bother with an axis. We just mark on the key features of the graph. Uh, negative 1, negative 1. So it's going to put a dot right over my label. Uh, negative 2, negative 3, and then negative 3, negative 5. So where are we? That's negative 4, negative 5, here's here. And as you can see we've got a lovely straight line. So once, um, once we do that we can connect it. So that's our linear graph of this relationship. Uh, with your linear graphs we will tend to label them as well so I'll just I'll label this as y equals 1 plus 2x. And there's our first one. Now it's pretty rare that you would plot that way. That was just a bit of a refresher for those who haven't done it for quite a while uh, that 
that's what that's really where our straight line comes from it comes from all of these different coordinates that can be created really an infinite number of coordinates we can create um, with this x or any x value uh, we can generate what is the y value that is paired with that that will create this dead straight line <clears throat> So I've mentioned that it's not our only method. Um, it is time consuming as well to graph that way, which is why uh, after year eight, we sort of move away from that. Um, and in year nine and year 10, when you graphed, uh, it's most likely you just looked for key features. So you got, for example, your y-intercept um, and your x-intercept or perhaps a different point, because whenever you are graphing a straight line, you only need two points. Two points, you connect, um, and then you've got your straight line. So with a calculator, uh, you will draw upon the calculator at times. So I'm going to show you now how we would do this one, the same one, y equals 1 plus 2x um, on the calculator. I do apologize if you've seen this before. You can always um, fast forward if you need to. So what we want to do is add graphs. And what's important is that the option that comes up here, f1x, means a function of x. That is our equivalent of writing y equals. So we don't need to put that. Uh, that's going to cause issues for you um, once you're starting to try and look at your graphs. So you take this bit as your y equals. Um, and then the rest of our graph was 1 plus 2x. And then I'll press enter. Uh, so straight away we get our... Our straight line come up which is perfect um, but if I was trying to sketch this I would need to know some key features of the graph so uh, I can't just copy what's on the screen right now because that doesn't actually show nice and clearly where this line is passing through so you get get used to always showing the coordinates of two points now if um if you're working with a domain or you're working with um, a part of the graph, you're usually told how, which part of the graph to, to show. <clears throat> but really, if you can see intercepts on your graph, you should be showing what they are. You should be actually labeling them on your sketch. So um, to get our intercepts, I think one of the easiest ways is to use this function, which is graph trace. So you press menu five and then one. And this gives you like this, this crosshair, like a target. And as you can see, when you are on um, this axis in intercept, <coughs> excuse me, when you're on the axis intercept, it'll tell you. So if I scroll away and come back, it'll come up with Y intercept. And then down there, it's got the coordinate for it. So that's what I would show on my graph. I'd put a little uh, mark where the Y intercept is. So that means where it's touching the Y axis. And I'd write 0, 1. For the x-intercept, you can just scroll and it will come up with this banner, zero banner. That's telling me that I'm on the uh, where y is zero. So that is our, our x-intercept. X-intercept always occurs where y is zero um, because the x-axis sits on y is zero. Uh, so as you can see down in the corner there again, we could then uh, plot that point on the graph. So that's uh, probably the easiest way, I think, to get your intercepts. There are there are other ways as well, um, but I've never seen a case where this one hasn't worked, so it's probably your go-to. Um, just a note that to move around the graph a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster, you don't have to scroll like I am. You can actually enter a value for x. So if I just said, if I was all the way down here in my graph, say I was exploring down here, and I wanted to get back to the y-intercept, I wouldn't have to scroll. I can just press um, zero, and what you'll notice come up is x equals zero. When I press enter, it'll take me back to that point. Or well, say I wanted to know when x is five. I just press five and enter, and it takes me to that value. So again, it's really good when you're graphing because if you need to put um, say endpoints on your graph, so um, say the, the the Cartesian plane you were given ended at x is ten. I could put in 10 and press enter and it will tell me what the coordinate is at that point. So a really quick way to get the coordinates that you need uh, in order to do your sketch. So that's explained there in those, um, those instructions. Um, but if we go further down, there is another, um, there's another form that your line might be 
might be drawn in. Um, and it's it's called a standard form, but uh, it looks like this. It's actually got the x and the y terms on the same side of the equation, and then it's got a, a value on the other side. So we just call that a constant value or c. So uh, as an example, if I just make one up, you might have something like 2x plus 3y equals 6. Now, if you've got something like that, that's not going to work when you um, – when you try and enter it into that graphing page that I had before. So if I go back to this one, uh, I'll just click on that and delete it. Um, and if I just go back to – oops, that wasn't very smart. I'll just enter it in now anyway just so you can see. I press um press on tab pressing on tab will bring up this option. Say I just had um my rule. Whoops. So I'm just trying to get my um my axes looking a little bit a little bit better. Um, so just say you had your rule sitting there and you wanted to add your next graph, and the graph was in that um that's that form from before. I've got y at the front, y equals. So I can't now enter in the graph, uh, say, 2x plus 3y. So there is an option there for you. I'll just delete that one. Um, and if you have a look on the instructions here, you, you do actually need to find what we call a template. So if you go menu, graph entry, and then equation templates, um, you can then click on line and then you'll see line standard. So it actually comes up with a template when your line is in this form um, and then it'll allow you to actually type in the numbers that you've got. So as an example, menu, uh, we've got our graph entry edit, equation templates, line, and then this one which is the standard form. When you click on that, you'll see you'll be able to enter, enter the, the graph in. So I can't remember what I did, 2x plus 3y equals 6. 2x, 3y, 6, uh, and then press enter. Now, I can't see it, but that doesn't mean that I haven't put it in. It just means that my window is not there. There we go. So I just did zoom fit just so I can see the line, um, and I could adjust my window settings so that they're a little bit better, of course. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, that's another way of getting a line if it's not in the right format. Uh, it's rare that they won't be in the right format in this subject. It tends to happen more in methods. Uh, but if you do come across a resource where, where it's like that, um, be confident knowing you can still plot it. So just about um, adjusting your window settings. This is where, say, before I couldn't see – I couldn't see the graph um, and so sometimes your first option is to just make sure obviously you can see it so you you know you've entered it in um, and so you'll notice I did before this zoom fit option. Zoom fit is, is um, a good first option because it'll take you to where the graph is. It may not be the window or it may not be showing you as much of the graph you actually want to see but at least you can, um, you can locate the graph. So um, if I do this example here, I'll just clear this and start again. So graphs. This example that I want to show you has got a really high y-intercept. It's got a y-intercept of 25, which is why something like this, when you first put it in, you can't see the graph. So 25 plus x and press enter. So it's not there because the graph, is, you see that my y-axis goes to 6.67 and 25 is obviously way, way, way up the top there. So uh, of course I'm, I'm not looking in the right spot at this particular point. So if we go menu and then our zoom option, this one that I used before, zoom fit, is a good one because it'll take you straight to the graph. So at least you can see it and you can start exploring. Um, there's other options though, and uh, the other option is, is a very important one, and that is using your window or adjusting your window settings. So if we go to uh, back to this page here, you'll notice that uh, often you're told, what, like you're told really what, what you should be showing on your graph, so you can use that um, as your guide. And sometimes it's a context, so say, say for example you're doing something with um, like a cost, um, you don't need a negative cost um, and usually people don't buy a negative amount of items either so you wouldn't need a negative X um, 
So it, for things like that, it, it's sort of clear that which which part of the graph you should be looking at. But otherwise, use any instructions you're told. So if I want to look at this one, for, for example, and I want to actually see more of this graph, I'll just go menu, window, and then the top one, window settings. So this X min means the lowest value for X that you can see. Um, so I can change that if I want. I might just make it negative 20. Press tab to move up and down. I think that's the easiest way. Um, and say I wanted to go to positive 20. The scale, you can generally just leave on auto. Uh, X, uh, Y minimum. So where does my graph start? Well, say I wanted to just see a little bit under the axis. So I might put negative 5. And Y maximum, I don't know, I'll just go to 40 and press enter. So now I can see nice and clearly where my graph goes. Um, and from there I can do my trace and I can get these different values that, that I might need. Say X is 1, X is 2, X is 3, etc. And of course the way intercept will come up too. So that's how we change the settings. Uh, it's a little explanation of what X min, X max is, but um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, another thing that you can do is get a table of values. Um, so, I don't know, maybe this might be useful occasionally, but basically once you've got a graph open, you just have to press Control and then T, um, and you can press that again to remove it. Um, but as you can see, this is basically telling me the line passes through 126, 227, 328, etc. So occasionally that might be helpful. Um, but know that that's an option to, for you and you can see it goes back into the negatives as well. And it'll just keep going. So control T will remove that, that table. So to finish up, we might just do this one. For us to plot the graph, um, and it says for the window given. So uh, just to note that this window, this, uh, these, these symbols here um, are just a way of telling us how much of the graph do we want to actually draw because these linear graphs will go on um, forever. So they'll go on for an infinite number of X, Y values. Uh, so we have to have a finish point for it. So this here just simply means your X values uh, on your, so values on your X axis need to go from negative one to positive five. So I'll just start drawing up oops, a set of axes and my Y values have to go from negative 1 to positive 40. So I might actually move that down since I only have to go from, uh, from negative 1 so not much of this axis needs to be shown up to positive 40. Okay, oh actually now I've looked at the other one, I might do the same here. Okay, so for example, with the X, I've got negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I won't show anything beyond that. And then, um, so for this one, 40. I might just go 10, 20, 30, 40. And negative one is going to be right here. So I just have to make sure I don't show anything below that on my graph. All right, so um, to, I might get the calculator to assist uh, with this once I get my my numbers on there, just so I know what I'm working with. Um, and it says to generate a table of values as well. So we'll just do that um, on the calculator. All right, so delete that one and press tab to get this uh, function come up. And I've forgotten what it was already. 10 plus 5x. Okay, 10 plus 5x. All right, so there's our graph. Um, but of course, we don't need to see all of this. So we'll adjust those, those window settings. There we go. And we wanted uh, negative 1 to positive 5. And we wanted negative 1 to positive 40. All right, there we go. So there we have it. That's what we want to show on our graph. So what I'll do first is I'll get my x value 
at negative 1. Now you can do that by pressing Control T to get your table values and just scrolling up. There's negative 1 for x, so the y value there is 5. So I'll label that negative 1, 5. And my other value, so I want, it, I want this to go up to x is 5. So I just need to know what is the value when x is 5. There it is, it's 35. So that would be around about there, halfway between. So 5, 35. So we work out what our, where our line is at these two x values and then we would connect them. Okay, well then um, we'll label our line. So y equals 10 plus 5x. And the last thing I'll do is because I can see there's an intercept here, that's an important feature of a graph. So what I'll do is get that, um, get that intercept. Now, you can see that mine hasn't been drawn super well. I might fix that actually. Uh, that's only because I don't have a grid here. So it's, not, it's never going to be very accurate without a grid or without use of a ruler. Um, but my y-intercept, which is this part of the graph, that should be 10. And you can see mine doesn't quite go through 10 at the moment. Now another way that I could have found that it was 10, um, if I just get rid of my, my thing here and I go menu trace, graph trace, um, and go to x is 0, you can see that that value there has to be 0, 10. So what I'll do is I'll just fix this. Handy thing about being able to do it on a screen. Except it does, it's not going to let me, so I might just draw it again. I've got to get through those. That's a little bit better. So about there, 535. Doesn't have to be perfect because that's the point of showing your coordinates because you're showing where that line is actually passing through. And in actual reality, we wouldn't, we would rarely actually put um, a scale on it because then that's when you get these issues that I'm having right now. We would rarely put a scale on it. We would just put. Um, our points and then our labels. So that's roughly what it should look like. Um, but the key point is, let's put it on the side. Um, this was 0, 10. So uh, label any intercepts. Um, and end points of graph. basically uh, where it finishes. Uh, also, we want to label um, the graph with its equation. This is important because later in the topic we'll be plotting more than one line on the same set of axes, so each has to be labelled. Uh, so just get used to doing it now. Okay, I'll finish there. Um, you'll now be able to try that first, uh, that first exercise, which will be um, on your work plan.